Yeah, so I thought one thing that's really important for tackling stigma is, is the language that we use. And so the neurodiversity frameworks really helped us think about what words we use for different conditions, you know, what, what labels we use, because labels are really powerful in shaping how people think about, about differences in children. So if, for example, we label autism as a disorder and we use words around deficits and, and kids having problems with something or kids failing at something, then that can create this perception that there's something wrong with the child, which can, of course, contribute to stigma towards that um, towards that individual, potentially. There's also a recognition, I think, within the diversity movement of understanding what differences in children might be perfectly fine for that child and actually might be helpful. So stimming is one really clear example where, you know, a lot of autistic people find stimming really valuable. So that might be repetitive motions or it might be fiddling with something. But for a long time, stimming was seen as, as a negative that had to be stopped or should be prohibited. So, you know, stigma builds up around it, right? So you feel like you can't stim when other people are around because they might think badly of you. And then in turn, you know, if you find stimming helpful and you're having to inhibit that, that's going to be stressful. It's going to produce anxiety or not able to do what's going to make you feel better so having a neurodiversity affirmative approach where people around you understand that actually stimming is just your way of dealing with stress or anxiety in a particular situation making it broadly accepted reduces the stigma associated with stimming and then means that people can kind of express themselves in, in the way that they want to 